inshallah today taking the doubts we learned from last week we're gonna talk about something very important and that is to do with the respect and adab of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as you know that honoring and respecting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the integral part of our deen and anything that denotes his respect and honor is permissible in Sharia in other words if you do an act and the Sharia has not mentioned anything in contrary to that action then that deed that action becomes permissible however if a certain action is against the teaching of the Quran or the hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam or the aqwal of ayyumay mujtahideen then that action instead of respecting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam we are dishonoring Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam the ulama kiram they have given an example of sujood and ruku' that yes it is in the Quran that the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam they and the parents of Yusuf ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu taslim they prostrated to Yusuf alayhi salam out of adab as mentioned in Surah Al-Yusuf however according to a hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and ijma' of ulama we are not allowed to prostrate to anyone out of adab it is only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ummah uh, ummah muhammadiyya that we are not allowed to prostrate to anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to prostrate to anyone with adab whether to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or whether to a spiritual person it is haram and forbidden sharia unfortunately nowadays especially on internet there are certain individuals our Sunni brethren and sisters listening to those whom they shouldn't listen to and reading things they shouldn't be reading they are doubting one of the signs of Ahlus Jama'ah and that is kissing the thumbs when you listen to or when you hear the blessed name of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam now of course as I told you last week the certain ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may not be sahih as such but as we're gonna dwell into later on that if a muhadith if a scholar says a certain hadith is not sahih it doesn't mean it is fabricated as we heard and we learned last week, there are four degrees. The Sahih, and then Hassan, and then Da'if, weak narration, and the Mawdu, the last, which is not really classed as a Hadith, which is a fabricated Hadith. So when a scholar negates the first initial level of Hadith, a Sahih, it doesn't mean he's negating Hassan or he's negating Da'if. It doesn't mean it is Mawdu. So sometimes there might be certain Hadith that they are not Sahih. However, according to Muhaddithun, they might be Hassan. There might be certain a hadith, they're not sahih and hasan, but they might be da'if. And as we're going to dwell into this topic later on, inshallah. Now, um, the books in front of me, inshallah, the first and foremost book I would like to talk about is the book of our great Mujaddid, our Imam Sayyidi Ala Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Now, this is Fatai Ridwiya, volume number five of the new uh, publication, which is in 30 volumes. Allah radiallahu ta'ala anhu was asked a question as regards to kissing the thumbs when you hear the blessed name of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Allah radiallahu ta'ala anhu wrote a book in 190 pages. How many? Hundred and two rasail. This is first risala. Munir ul ayn fi hukmi taqbili bahamain. This is um, volume number five. From 429 and goes to 190 pages. Initially, Allah Hazrat Allah, this book was in very concise book of consisting <coughs> of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now look at the genius of Rasulullah, the in-depth knowledge Allah Hazrat had about a hadith. The initially he wrote a small book, Munin Ra'in fi Hukm Taqbil Bahamain, and then Allah Hazrat Allah Taala Anhu he dwelt into a topic. That certain individuals who are known ahl a hadith or ahl a hadith, they doubt the authenticity of certain a hadith. So Allah Hazza radiallahu ta'ala wrote marginal notes, commentary 
upon his original book in, and it became another book. Okay, and the name of the book is Al Had Al Kaf Fi Hukm Al Diaf, which is also part of Munul Ain. Now, this is in, translated in Arabic by my Grand Sheikh, Great Sheikh Huzut Al Sharia Mudazul Ali into Arabic. And this is another one in Arabic. So those who are watching this, and of course most of the people who are doubting their Arabs, I request them to listen and read to these books and understand what the hukam of the if is. Now Allah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he begins stating that kissing the blessed thumbs or the index fingers is proven from many a hadith, from the books of fuqaha, and the statements of the ulama and many many ulama kiram they have acted upon this deed proving the fact it is permissible in sharia point number one point number two as i said before so when a muhaddith when he mentions a hadith and when at the end he says that this is not sahih it doesn't mean it is fabricated you mean it is not at the level the first level of the hadith it might be Hassan, it might be Da'if. But it doesn't mean that just because a muhaddith, a scholar has stated a hadith is not sahih, it doesn't mean it is fabricated. Point number three. As we learned last week, when there are many, many Da'if a hadith, okay, if you combine together, the, the actual text will become strong. Yes, there are many, many weak narrations if you collate together. Okay, the actual text of the matan of the hadith or the meaning of a hadith will become strong. Certain ulama they have stated become Hassan, Hassan li ghayrihi. Okay, and same with Hassan, many, many Hassan hadith when they join together become Sahih. And point number four, this is very important for you to understand that we only use the da'if hadith in order to understand a virtue of an action or a penalty of an action. So let's say there's a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us the merits and the reward of certain action. Now just because this hadith is da'if it doesn't mean we neglect this hadith. Because the ulama kiram stated in the field of amal for a virtue, for da'il, we are allowed to take such a hadith in order to promote goodness. And also if there's a certain hadith, that if you do this action, this is a'adha from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, that hadith might be da'if. But in order to pe make people abstain from certain actions, we are allowed to use that hadith. Not as aqidah, but as for fadail, for amal. Now, he then says, point number five, that if there is no hadith, Let's say there's no hadith for certain action. Then we need to check. Is there anything against this hadith action? If it's not against, there's nothing against this action, then sharia that is permissible. Aslul asha al ibaha This is a, something which all the Sunnah should remember. That when they say this is haram, this is bid'ah, this is inno an innovation, First thing is, ask them where is the Quranic verse or the hadith of Rasulullah explicitly saying this action is haram. If there is no explicit verse in the Quran or hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then no doubt according to Sharia, as the original state of everything, that the original state is ibaha, it is permissible. Yes? So wearing, for example, a scarf around your neck, okay, you cannot say this is haram. Because there's no explicit mentioning of wearing a scarf around your neck in the Quran or Hadith. Yes, if there's a Quranic verse or the Hadith or the Ulma it is haram, it becomes haram. Otherwise, when Sharia is silent, when Sharia is silent, it is permissible. And um, the last point he made, he, he uh, writes is, Sayyidina Allah has already Allah ta'ala, that even there's no Hadith, to mention the virtue of an action by the action of the ulama. If the ulama kiram, the great ulama kiram, if they acted upon an action and they found it useful, worldly terms or in religious terms, that action is part of deen, as we're going to learn later on. Now, one of the greatest alim 
خطیب پاکستان علامہ شفی اقارب رحمۃ اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ میں اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی ویٹ اسٹیٹس ہی تھک دی بکس آف اعلیٰ حضر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ بیکاز ناؤ ایز یو کین سی آئی کین سی یور فیس از از ویری ڈیپ اوکے اٹ از فار اسکالرس ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ دی ورکس آف سید اعلیٰ حضر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ بٹ نیور دا لیس فار دا کامن پیپل ہی ہیز ریٹن اے بک بک ان ویری کنسائس مانا جس مینشننگ فیو احادیث رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اینڈ الحمد للہ انگلش از ہیئر And inshallah, this book will be in your hands very soon. Now I'm going to go through some ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the merits, the virtue, and the excellences of those people who kiss their hands, their thumbs, and they rub it over eyes. And what benefit they will have in this world and akhirah. Now, just to begin with, he states, the great faqih, Sayyiduna Imam, Ibn al-Humam radiallahu ta'ala says that every action, listen to this, remember this, every action by which respect and honor is intended is mustahab. Any action that denotes the adab, the honor or izzah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is mustahab, it is recommended, you act upon that. Now he begins with one hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The reference is Tafsiruh al-Bayan by Sheikh Ismail Haqqi, the great uh, Mufassil alayhi rahmatul ridwan. The hadith or the narration goes that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam ala nabiyyina wa ala sirat aslim. And as the hadith says that as Adam was 60 feet tall. Adam alayhi salam, he wanted, to, he had the yearn, the desire to meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he got to know that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is going to be from his descendants. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, no, you will not able to meet him because he is going to come later on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of the desire he had, he shone the light of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on his thumbs. And now all... Narration says his index fingers, that's what is called musabbaha. I is something that does tasbih. Because when the light of Rasulullah began to shine on the index fingers or the thumbs of Adam al Islam, it began to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did Adam al Islam, what did our father do? Our grandfather, great grandfather, what did he do? He kissed the thumbs or index fingers and placed it over his eyes. Say subhanallah. And then this. The great Mufassir, he says that this act was practiced throughout the generations. Then when Jibreel alayhi salam, he informed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam about this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam then said, whoever, after hearing my name in Adhan, kisses his thumbs and rubs them over his eyes, will never become blind. This is volume 4, page 649. Moreover, another reference, Muhiyyat, the great book, that Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered Masjid al-Nabawi. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu was sat next to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when Sayyidina Bilal al-Habashi radiallahu ta'ala anhu gave adhan. When Sayyidina Bilal al-Habashi radiallahu ta'ala anhu when he came to the point saying, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he kissed his thumbs and rubbed his eyes over, he rubbed his thumbs over his eyes and said, Qurratu ayni bika ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The coolness of my eyes is by you ya Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. After adhan, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever does what you just did, O my Khalil, my friend, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of his sins. Say subhanallah. Now also the similar incident has been, uh, just for reference, by Sheikh Imam Abu Talib Muhammad Ibn Ali al-Makki in Qutul Qulub. He has mentioned the same incident, but the day was the day of Ashura, the 10th of Muharram, and this incident took place. Now the book in front of me, <coughs> is the book by great muhaddith uh, Shamsuddin Muhammad bin Abdul Rahman al-Sakhawi, Imam Sakhawi al rahmatul ridwan who passed away in 903, 902, 903 Hijri. 
just the time of Imam Jalaluddin Suyuti, just before Imam Jalaluddin Suyuti radiyallahu ta'ala, al maqasid al hasana fi bayan kathir min al hadith al mushtahirati ala al al sinah. It is in Arabic, and Allah has radiyallahu ta'ala has given many references to this book. And this book has given us uh, many hadith to give us the understanding of the importance and the virtue of kissing your thumbs when you hear the blessed name of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. He says, that, um, وَكَذَا مَا أَوْرَدَهُ أَبُو الْعَبَّاسِ أَحْمُدُ بْنَ أَبِي بَكْلٍ الرَّدَّادِ الْيَمَانِي الْمُتَصَوِّفِ فِي كِتَابِهِ مُوجِبَاتُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَأَزَعِ الْمَغْفِرَةِ He's giving, Imam Sakhav is giving another reference of a book. The Sayyiduna Khidr alayhi salam, Sayyiduna Khidr alayhi salam, Khidr alayhi salam, he says, Hazrat Khidr alayhi salam, he said, مَنْ قَالَ حِينَ يَسْمَعُ الْمُؤَذِّنَ يَقُولَ أَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمُ Whenever he hear the name of Rasulullah, whoever says, مَرْحَبًا بِحَبِيبِ وَقُرَّةُ عَيْنِ مُحَمَّدُ بْنُ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ ثُمَّ يُقَبِّلِ بَهَا مَيْلِ وَيَجْعَلُهُمَا عَلَى عَيْنَيْهِ لَمْ يَرْمُدْ أَمَدًا Hazrat Khidr alayhi salam says the same thing. When you hear the name of Rasulullah, exalted name of Rasulullah صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ If you were to say مَرْحَبًا بِحَبِيبِ وَقُرَّةُ عَيْنِ مُحَمَّدُ بْنُ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ And then he kisses his thumbs. And he places the thumbs over his eyes. He, his eyes will never hurt. And then another hadith of Rasulullah صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ Subhanallah. That once... His friend, he says, An akhil faqih Muhammad bin al-Baba. No, al-Baba. Al-Faqih Muhammad bin al-Baba. He says about himself that there was a wind, annahu habbad rih fa waqat minhu hasatun fi aynihi. That there was a strong wind and particles went into his eyes. Fa'ayahu khurujaha. So it was very difficult to take it out. وَأَعْلَمَتْهُ أَشَدُّ أَشَدَّ الْأَلَمُ It was very severe. The pain was very severe. Yeah, because of the dust particles that entered his eyes. وَأَنَّهُ لَمَّا سَمِعَ الْمُؤَذِّنِ When this great faqih, when he heard the mu'adhin, يَقُولُ أَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى سَلَّمْ قَالَ ذَلِكَ He said the same thing. فَخَرَجَتِ الْ And then he did the same thing. فَخَرَجَتِ الْحَسَاتُ مِنْ فَوْ Immediately the particles came out of his eyes. وَقَالَ الرَّدَّادِ Imam Raddad he says, listen to this. وَهَذَا يَسِيرٌ What I said. وَهَذَا يَسِيرٌ فِي جَنْبِ فَضَاءِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمُ To take certain these ahadith narrations, it is good. Islam and Shaykh allows in order to understand the virtue of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. سبحان الله. Many ahadith of Rasulullah صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم. And Ibn Salih, a great muhaddith, a great faqih, he says, Ana wallahi, ana walillahi liham, I, by, and then he prays Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, walillahi lihamdu wa shukr, mundu sami'atuhu minhuma, when I heard about this, from my two teachers, isti'amaltuhu, I began to act upon it, falam tarmud aynaya, my eyes never felt any pain. And then he says, this is Muhaddith, وَأَرْجُوا and I hope أَنَّ عَافِيَتَهُمَا تَدُومُ that the eyes, the عَافِيَة, the protection of my eyes will be forever. وَأَنِّ أُسْلَمَا مِنَ الْعَمَى and Allah, insha'Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect me from blindness. This is a great Muhaddith. And there's many, many hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. In one hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inshallah just few minutes, in Sharhu Niqaya, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, oh, it is in this book, he says, it should be known that no doubt to recite sallallahu alayhi ya Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at the first shahada, when Ashadu, twice, you hear the name twice. So when you hear the first time, you should recite this. 
until we said Kurratu Aini Bika Ya Rasulullah in the second is Mustahab. One should rub his thumbs on the eyes and recite Allahumma Matti'ini Bisami Wal Basar. Recite after me. Allahumma Matti'ini Bisami Wal Basar. Oh Allah, protect my hearing and protect my eyesight. The, the Faqih says, the, in Shari Niqaya, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will take him into Jannah. If you make a habit to act upon this, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will hold your hand and he will take you into Jannah, inshaAllah. And that is why in the Hadith, which is written in uh, Allah Mashami, as I'm going to show it to you in the next moment. That he says, he narrates one hadith, that I will lead him to Jannah and put him, the one who does this, and put him in the row sufuf of those who will enter Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect his eyes from all ailments and all um, harm, inshallah. Now, the, this book, is from a great faqih, great author of Hanaf, Ibn Abidin Shami, Ali Rahmatu Ridwan. Probably some of you know this name. The Ahl Dayabana, from those who are from the school of Dayuban, they use this book and they use this as a book of reference. Okay? He was known as the last, the final jurist. Yes? Ibn Abidin Shami, radiallahu ta'ala, this is. Al Juz al Thani, the second volume. Page 627. Okay, it is in the chapter of Adhan, the, the, the final chapter in the chapter of Adhan. Look at this great uh, faqih, what he says. He says, As we heard before, it is recommended. That to be said when you hear the first shahada, Sallallahu Alaihi Ya Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not only it proves that it's permissible to kiss your hands, but they, these fuqaha, they said it is permissible to say Sallallahu Alaihi Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa in the thaniyati minha, and from the shahada of the second one says, Qarrat Aini. Or the other nashi, Qarrat Aini. Qarrat Aini bika Ya Rasulullah. ثم يقول اللهم متعني بالسمع والبصر بعد وضع زفر الأبهامين على العينين. After placing the the two thumbs upon his eyes, فإنه عليه السلام because the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم يكون قائدا له إلى الجنة. The Rasul Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم will be will lead him to Jannah. And and the this is the completion of. Um, Discussion of uh, Adhan. Now, even if the people argue that we still do not believe, then this is the last resort. This is a book, Mukammal Il Mulfiq Urdu. And this is a book, you can buy it if they don't, if you're unaware of it, from the bookshops, from the other sects. Okay, this has been published in Mir Muhammad Qutub Khana Alam Bagh, Karachi. Okay, now this is from, this is written is on fiqh. Now, just in the preface of the book, let me just narrate you before I mention anything about this book. The author, Maulvi Muhammad Abdul Shakur Sahib Faruqi Laknawi. Okay, the author of this book. Okay. He says about this book, page number two, the preface of the book. Har Muslime wahi qalika jayega jis par fatwa hai. We will only mention in this book those rulings upon which the verdicts of the ulama. Mufta bihi qal. Mukhtalif aqwal or riwayat ka zikr na kiya jayega. We will not mention any difference of opinions. Why? So that it doesn't create confusion to a person who's reading this book. Because this book is for the awam, for the common people, for the laymen. So just to avoid any confusion, they stated we only narrate, we only write in this book those rulings upon which the ulama have agreed they are sahih, they are sound. And then he says later on, 
जब कोई ऐसा नंबर फाइव जब कोई ऐसा मसला पेश आवे कि जिसका हुक्म कुतब फिक में नहीं इफ दे आर सर्टेन रूलिंग्स द वी कैन ऑफ फाइंड फ्रॉम बुक्स ऑफ फुकाह या सख्त इख्तलाफ की वजह से एक दो शख्स फैसला ना कर सके और बिकॉज द डिफरेंस ऑफ ओपिनियंस इफ टू ओलमा और टू मुफ्तियान के राम दिखाना अग्री दिखना कम टू योर कंक्लूजन तो ओलमाए अरब व अजम से मशूरा करके मुहक कॉल लिख दिया जाएगा then if there are different opinions or rulings then we will resort to the ulama of arab and the ulama of ajab non arabs and the most researched and the most mutahaqqaq call the statement will be written in this book is that understood in other words everything which is here according to the musannif and according to the ahl diamana who read this book they sell this book they print this book the students read this book and the common people read this book according to them every ruling is according to sharia and it is sahih and sound yes or no yes now this is um hissa number 2 jildom um page 18 okay so page 18 of this book number 11 point number 11 about azan Again the same thing. Azan sunne wale ko mustahab hai ke pehli martaba ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sunne to ye bhi kahe they should say this as well sallallahu alaihi ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam aur jab dusri martaba sunne to apne dono haathon haath ke anguthon ko ke nakhunon ko aankh par rakh kar kahe yeah placing the thumbs on his eyes he should say this qurratu ayni bika ya rasulullah allahumma mat'ini bis sami wal basar okay and they also given the translation of the arabic so in the footnote he says um meri aankhon ki thandak aap hi se hai ae rasulullah अल्लाह मुझे फ़ायदा मन कर सम और बसर से वो अल्लाह प्रोटेक्ट माई ही रिंग एंड प्रोटेक्ट माई आई सर सो फ्रॉम दिस एंड द बुक्स ऑफ ओलमा एंड मुहदून वन थिंग इज़ क्लियर ओके प्लीज द सर्टन इंडिविजुअल्स फ्रॉम अहल सुन जमा आर ओन सुन ब्रदर्स Okay, I've seen myself in the near the masjid we have masjid in Islam. The people they're going. on internet and just listening to few certain ulama e karam they think they are the legends of the time they think they know everything i listen to them they are now doubtful whether to kiss the thumbs is permissible or impermissible no doubt after all this the doubt should have cleared and have been made more clear that no doubt kissing the thumbs when you listen to the honorable name the respect name rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is recommended it's a mustahab and it's full of virtue and excellence by which one can benefit in this world and inshallah yawm al qiyamah he will be with rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he will enter jannah with rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam so pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to stick to the truth may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give our youth the true understanding the no doubt ahlu sunnah jamaa the maslak of sayyid ala hazra radiyallahu ta'ala anhu is not his own maslak but as we heard that and those brothers who still doubt i recommend them to read the book al hadul kaf which is also in arabic and uh, which is in urdu to dwell into this topic try to understand the signs of hadith that yes just because the muhaddith says that certain hadith is not sahih it doesn't negate the fact that we not allowed to uh, act upon certain uh, hadith may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give everyone tawfiq wa khadaw alhamdulillah assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh